Our world is defined by borders between continents, countries, provinces, states, cities, towns, and villages. And when you really think about it, borders are a strange concept. At some point in time, people from one community decided that an imaginary line should separate their culture, their identity, and their traditions against outsiders. Having borders is how we can collectively make sense of the world, and it's also how we can govern our societies. Most borders make a lot of sense if the languages are different, such as France and Germany, or if they're divided by natural landscapes, like how the Himalayan mountains separate India from Nepal. But there are many bizarre borders that I've discovered during my travels, which I'm going to share with you in today's video. The first strange border that we're going to talk about today is the one between North Korea and South Korea, two countries that are technically still at war because a peace treaty has never been signed. This border, known as a DMZ or Demilitarized Zone, is 160 miles long and was established after the Korean War ended in 1953. It's also the thickest border in the world at 2.5 miles wide. There is one place called the Joint Security Area or JSA on the west side of the DMZ where the two countries hold meetings and negotiations. It's also open to tourism where I've been many times in the past and every visitor is required to sign a waiver that notes the possibility of injury or death. The second bizarre border I'm going to tell you about today is called Kaliningrad, which is a Russian territory right in the middle of the European Union. It's situated between Poland, Lithuania, and the Baltic Sea, some 1,088 kilometers west of Moscow, but it's still extremely Russian. The entire state of Kaliningrad, which has a population just shy of 1 million people, was formerly called Königsberg, capital of East Prussia, but it was captured by the Red Army in 1945 and ceded to the Soviet Union at the Potsdam Conference. Even though I haven't been to Kaliningrad yet, it's high on my list because I know it's one of the stranger places to go in Europe and it just boggles my mind that you're like in Russia, but you're not in Russia, but you're in Russia. I don't know guys, if you like weird places like I do, then you should definitely add it to your list. That leads me to the third strangest border that I want to tell you about today, and that is around the country of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan proper borders Georgia, Armenia, Russia, and Iran, four countries that have all been at war with each other in one way or another over the last century. When I went to Azerbaijan, I really loved it, especially the city of Baku. I loved how it was super modern and super old school at the same time, but I kept scratching my head about the places around it. Tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan have caused that 1,000 kilometer border to be closed, but that's not even the most interesting part. The most bizarre thing here is a de facto state or unrecognized territory called Nagorno-Karabakh. Nagorno-Karabakh is internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan, but most of the region is governed by the Republic of Artsakh, who are made up of Christian Armenians. You cannot enter Nagorno-Karabakh from Azerbaijan, only from Armenia. So if you try to visit the former with a Nagorno-Karabakh stamp in your passport, then you probably be denied. All of my travel buddies who have been to Nagorno-Karabakh told me really wild stories and I really hope to get there someday soon. Alright guys, the four strangest border that I want to tell you about today is the Dionida Islands which separate Russia and the United States. Yes, they are neighboring countries. There are two islands which consist of rocky plateaus in the middle of the Bering Strait between mainland Alaska and Russian Siberia. Both islands are separated by the international dateline, something like Samoa and American Samoa, which means they are 24 hours apart. Traveling to the Diomede Islands is nearly impossible. You must charter a flight or helicopter and it will land on ice. The only town of Diomede has 135 people and their ethnic group is called the Inuit, similar to the ones I saw in Eastern Greenland when I was in the town of Ito Tokormit. Ito Kotomin. Ito Kotomin. It's just like, you could also pronounce the English words quickly like eat, cut, dock, door, meat. Eat, cut, dock, door, meat. Yeah. That leads me into my fifth and final strange border that I would like to tell you guys about today and that is the beautiful continent of Antarctica. We tend to think of Antarctica as a place that is essentially unhabited and unclaimed, but it actually has some of the most interesting territorial disputes in the world. Below is a map of the land currently claimed on the continent. If you look closely, you'll see some of the land being unclaimed and some having double or triple ownership, but technically none of it matters because every single one of these countries has signed the Antarctic Treaty, which basically states that none of these claims imply any sovereignty to the claiming nations. 
To make things even stranger, somehow the United States and Russia have reserved the rights to own parts of Antarctica in the future, but I guess we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. On a personal note, I just want to say that I love Antarctica. I took an 18 day cruise down there a few years ago and it is absolutely one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful place we have on our planet. Hiking up this giant mountain on Peninsula Antarctica. All right guys, thanks for watching. That is the end of the video of the five strangest borders in the world. And to be honest, there's a lot more like Transnistria in Moldova, the Christiania in Denmark. I can go on and on and on, but I just wanted to kind of lead the conversation here and get you guys thinking. I really miss the road. It's really tough for me to be at home and trying to create content when I'm not physically there. Um, all I wanna do right now is to go somewhere and with my camera and document something and make stories. But I've been quarantining myself. I haven't really left my home in about five weeks now. So hope you guys are staying safe out there. Thanks for watching. As soon as I'm able to travel again, as soon as it's safe, I'm gonna be out there on the road visiting my last six countries. So with that being said, love you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.